Blake Baggett is a motocross chupacabra. From out of nowhere, he has ran down his competition and disappeared from sight. Baggett stayed in and on the outside. There he goes. And he still makes the pass. His three wins in five races have made him a rider everyone must fear. Look out for the chupacabra. He's hunting checkered flags. We're at the halfway mark of the 2011 Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship. It's the 40th anniversary tour and the Rockstar Energy Drink Red Bud National in Buchanan, Michigan. Hello everyone, Jason Wigand and Jeff Emig, four-time AMA National Champion here at Michigan for one of the crown jewels of this series and Speed's continuing coverage of the 250 class of AMA Motocross. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're following today. First, it is Blake Baggett coming in with the momentum. He's got three victories this year, but inconsistency at the other rounds has left him third in points. But while the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, including Baggett, tends to dominate this series early, the Geico Honda squad is going to try to strike back today. They're bringing Will Hahn back into action. We'll see how he can do against the mighty Green Army. And what about Dean Wilson? He is leading the points in this tour through consistency, but the number 15 is yet to take a victory thus far this year. So those are the stories we'll be following. We toss it over to you, Jeff. Sure, there are lots of big stars to talk about in the 250 class, but the real star of the show today is the track. Red Bud is a special place for everyone in this sport. What's Red Bud mean to you and really to everyone that comes and races motocross? Well, I just always had a great feeling when I came here. Fourth of July weekend, every year, you just know when you come here that the fans are going to come out in droves, and there's a really special energy here. That's the first part of the equation. The second part is the racetrack. Over the years, it has just uh, developed into one of the, the funnest places for the riders to race. And so all of that combined, you know, when you just add that in and mix it up, it just explodes out on the track. And we've had some legendary, fantastic racing here. Uh, Mother Nature played a part here today. The track's going to be a little bit wet earlier in practice. As the day goes on, it's going to dry out and get better and then possibly a little more rain by the end of the day. But all in all, just a fantastic weekend. I mean, the fans have been going crazy all morning. All right, it's going to be a fantastic race to cover and help us with that. We have Aaron Bates down in the starting line with a progressive pre-race report. Blake Baggett may have never raced here at Redbud before, but he came out swinging in that first moto. Blake, you took the victory there. What do you have in store for the second moto? Uh, same thing, just uh, see what we can do, you know, just get a top five start and uh, work our way from there. And hopefully it ends up on the top of the box at the end, but we'll just have to be patient, wait and see. I see they're throwing down a little bit of water, so it uh, must have got dry during the girls' race, but uh, see what happens. Best of luck to you. And his teammate, Tyler Rattray, is making his way. Tyler ended up getting fifth place during that first moto. Tyler, you had a crash. Take us through how deceiving this track is and what you have to do to overcome it. Yeah, it was pretty tough, you know. It's uh, crashing the second turn and... Uh, Came from last, back to fifth, so felt good in the moto. Um, obviously going to try and make it easy on myself, get a good start, and put myself in a good position to race for the win. Best of luck. And last but definitely not least, Kyle Cunningham, who's keeping himself shaded. Kyle, hot and humid conditions out here. You're from Texas, though. Are you acclimated, and are you ready for the second moto of the day? Uh, yeah, I think the first moto was a little bit hotter, but uh, it's starting to feel a lot better out here. And uh, we had a pretty good ride for fourth. Got a little bit tight there midway in the race, but... Uh, managed to pick it back up the last few laps. So uh, we felt good and we're looking for that podium again today. There's nobody here in this 250 field that has won the overall here at Redbud, looking to make history today. We're back at Redbud here in Buchanan, Michigan, right on the Michigan-Indiana state line. Fans are fired up as we approach our second 250 moto. Why is it the second race? Well, we'll show you with our motocross 411 breakdown. We run two motos every afternoon, 40 riders in each, and each race lasts 30 minutes plus two laps in duration. And we combine the results of the first race and the second to determine an overall winner for the day. Now, that's the format. We'll give you an idea what the track looks like with our Kawasaki track map. Jeff Emig, talk about Red Bud. Oh, Red Bud is one of the, the greatest tracks. You know, it's, it's one of the tracks that the riders really look forward to. Awesome soil, fantastic jumps. It's really challenging today because we had quite a bit of rain yesterday. Made the track soft and ruddy in spots, uh, especially in the first moto, some of the off-camber turns 
uh, were really challenging. And um, overall, the track, it's a lot of fun. Now that the temperatures are up over 100 degrees today, humidity's up there. It's really hot, track's dried out a little bit, and it's gonna be faster this moto than in the first one. All right, that's what it looks like on the graphic. Let's give you what it looks like on the bike. Ryan Sipes is going to cut some laps here with their uh, GoPro Hero cam. Jeff? Yeah, and that, and that was the first one of these uh, really treacherous off-cambers. This is earlier today in qualify practice. You can see just how wet the track is. Here's another rider that's actually stuck in the mud. And in the first moto, those two off-camber turns uh, were a real critical part um, of, uh, you know, of the moto. And uh, Blake Baggett was actually able to use an, a new outside line and make some passes. But Ryan Sipes right here had a fantastic first moto, showing us the way around earlier today. And we'll show you the highlights of that first moto. Drag race into the first turn, a bunch of Hondas up front early. It's going to be Justin Barsha on the 17, edging out his teammate Lance Vincent on the 245. So Barsha is in the lead. Yeah, and then it was Dean Wilson, the first Kawasaki, starting to make his way around, see how he gets on the brakes. Let's Vincent fly right by. That's for second. Vincent's race would get worse in a hurry. Here he is in third. And then what do you say about that soft dirt? He got stuck. He got his weight to the outside and uh, lost a position there to bag it. Barsha's still leading. And then he goes over this jump. And what do you say about that soft dirt? Oh, not so soft when you hit it at that pace. And Barsha was wheeling away from the competition Pounds his fist into the, into the uh, sand there, really frustrated, giving up the win. So Ryan Sipes, who had their helmet cam earlier in practice, inherits the lead from a downed Barsha. Battle is on for second. The 15 of Wilson, the 57 of Baggett. They both dig in. What'd you say about soft dirt? Yeah, you tell me that is not a, a tough spot here, but Baggett wisely learns from the pass on Wilson and says, OK, I'll try the outside, and goes around Sipes. Then Wilson attacks Sipes for the number two spot. Big mistake by Sipes at the beginning of this sand section allows the 15 to get by. So Dean Wilson up into the runner-up position, but Blake Baggett takes the Moto One win. He won uh, both of them last time out in Colorado, so that's three Moto wins in a row. We'll see if he can keep it going here in Moto Number Two. Riders are at the gate, and uh, Dean Wilson got to be a little bit frustrated. He does have the red number plate for he is your series points leader, but you know he wants a win before this day is up. We'll see if he can get it. Bunch of other riders to watch for in this race. We want to give you the uh, Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com keys to the race for the 245 of Lance Vincent. Lance Vincent, there you see his mechanic there shouting out some last minute inspiration, some orders, giving him the pep talk. Okay. Uh, he needs to get another good start. He's, he, he's shown that if he starts up front, he can run up front inside the top 10. Show your speed. I think uh, this kid has really got some serious speed. And once he starts up front, starts to believe in himself, that will just grow and his confidence will grow. Just one rider down from him, you see the number 31, that's Will Hahn, we mentioned, is back in action, that's Vincent's teammate. Hahn had a broken back in Supercross, and then when he healed from that, head to the practice track, crashed again, and uh, broke his shoulder. So this is his first race of the year for the number 31. We'll see if the Hondas, or the Yamahas, or really if anybody, can break up this string of victories for the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. They are one, two, three in points. They've won all the races so far this year. They are on a roll any way you cut it. Yeah, and you can see the track's pretty dry out through here, uh, out the first part, but then it drops off about 50 feet out. Geico Honda's had wow. to start dialed again. That is a monstrous pole shot. They normally don't get out front that far, and it is indeed Will Hahn. Welcome back to racing and leading here early at Redbud. Jason, he was three bike links <laughs> at least ahead. We had some riders down in uh, turn two. You see Tickle going by. He's buried mid-pack, and who knows went down. Oh, Justin Barsha. Apparently, they did not have the bike running, and problems for the man who got the whole shot in our first moto today. He is not even able to get off the start in this race. But his teammate, Will Hahn, is out front on the number 31. Barsha was running fifth in points leading into this event. Here comes Baggett and Wilson ganging up on Hahn. Baggett going to try to go to the lead early. It's going to be the outside here, Jeff. Right around the outside. Wow. And uh, notice they, they actually worked on these off-cambers quite a bit. They brought the bulldozers and the heavy equipment out to fix it up. But who are the two riders that are stepping up in this championship and just bringing the intensity? It's the 57 of Baggett, the 15 of Dean Wilson. 
And for Wilson, he's going to have to do something special because he can't, he can't try to rough him up as Baggett tries to come by like in Moto 1. He has to go out and show more speed, more fitness, and more desire, or the 57 is going to check out this moto. And Han had that massive hole shot. They get to this part of the track. The fans are going to say what happened to him. He's already been pushed back to third because these Kawasaki riders, like you said, are on the gas. Another great start for Vincent right yeah. here. He's at fourth, 245. This kid is uh, strutting his stuff because Will Han being back now, Lance Vincent was essentially the replacement rider for all the injured talent on that Geico Honda team. So now that some of the riders are beginning to come back into action, Vincent's got to fight for his spot, and he's doing a good job right now in fourth. Well, you see, now that Vincent has uh, got some time under his belt here with Geico Honda, starts are coming around. You can tell he's gelling with the motorcycle more. You know, that sort of chemistry that you have to have. And uh, he's putting in some good rides, so comes across fourth, and then Rattray, uh-oh. Wow, so Justin Barsha is already back to the hauler. The bike never started. They couldn't get it started, and maybe we'll see if Eric Bates can get over there and get a word to find out what happened. But the man who led off the start in our first race earlier today did not even get off of the start in our second one. And how about this, Jeff? You said Dean Wilson's got to find the speed, the fitness, and all that, and he has. He is going after our leader, Blake Baggett. Meanwhile, Aaron has found Justin Barsha in the pits. Aaron, what's happening? That's right, you guys. He's standing back here at the Geico Hall, or actually just shaking right now with frustration. Justin, a rough day for you. Take us through what happened. Yeah, you know, my bike just uh, it was running fine, slight lap, got back, bogged out. I don't know, something electronic, I'm assuming. Uh, really rough day. Just going to go back next week, you know, this week and just uh, you know, try to get everything right. I want to win, so nothing I can do. That's so frustrating. And for the Geico Honda team, they had Tomac go down earlier today in practice over uh, LaRocco's leap. He was taken to the hospital for observation. And it's Cunningham who was setting six just in points. He was 10 points behind Barsha coming into this race. Pass him in the first moto, and for sure now, so Barsha would have been uh, kicked back outside of the top five in points. Man, bad luck continues for that Geico Honda team. It's good to see Han and uh, Vincent up there right now, but they've got company. Here comes Tyler Atre, who finally has a decent start. And here he goes to try to get past Vincent, take over fourth, and he does. Wow, so clean out of that off-camber turn. He drew such a tight line on Vincent there. And that's the thing about Atre is that he rides just so perfect and so strict with his technique. And uh, on a day like today, where this track gets really rough and uh, takes a lot out of you physically, he's very calm on the bike. He's very efficient. But uh, let's look at Vincent here coming around the outside. Yep, nothing doing. Vincent has proven that he's not afraid of these guys. He will try to pass you back if he can. Uh, behind him, uh, we got, uh, I believe, Cole Seeley on the uh, Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda. So a couple different Honda teams up there, but the Kawasaki boys are 1-2. Now it's Han versus Rattray for third. Baggett comes by with a 216-1, Wilson a 216-9, Han a 218, and Rattray a 215-9, the fastest lap. Rattray is the fastest rider on the track right now. He wants to make this set of a Kawasaki duo, a trio up front, pretty much as it's been all season. Yeah, I was gonna say, we've seen that scenario several times. Now, a lot of people theorizing this is a good track for Rattray, and uh, you seem to agree with that, the way you say his riding style and things like that work for a rough track like this. Okay, he, he says that in Africa, South Africa, where he's from, that it's <laughs> yes. hot. It's Africa hot, okay. and that this is not yet to that level. Wow, who knows? So maybe it's cold for Not him. enough for, the, for us Yanks, that's for sure. Baggett leading Dean Wilson, but it is close. It's going to be a good one. Battle is on. Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship. Blake Baggett leading Dean Wilson. They're teammates. You'd expect them to be nice to each other out on the track. But if you're Dean Wilson and you've taken a whole bunch of second place finishes this year, I don't think you want any of that anymore. He wants to go to the number one spot, and he has closed back up on Baggett in an attempt to get it. Dean Wilson is your points leader. No overalls this season. Baggett has three. And in that section, Baggett able to get away just a little bit. And in this next section, of the course, wow. Wilson real fast through that left-hander, trying to close back up. So they both got sections of the trap. 
where they can pull away or gain on each other. And there you see the stat of Wilson. Four times he has finished second in the first five races this year. He wants a W. Well, as far as Moto wins, Wilson's won three of them to bag at six. But, you know, you want to be consistent, but these guys also want to win. And for Wilson, it would be, uh, you know, the type of effort that he puts out, the type of training, how determined he is. It's frustrating to not come to the race and not win. But right now, he's got a perfect opportunity, 21 minutes plus two laps. And what he needs to do is pressure his teammate and just be relentless with it and try to wear him down. Aaron is down with a very disappointed Darren Durham, who's out of this race. Aaron? That's right, guys. He finished sixth during that first moto. Disappointment struck during the moto number two. But Darren, can you tell us what happened out there? Yeah, I got a really good start. I think I was, uh, I think I was like third, and my bike started cutting out, and then it just slowly got worse, and it wouldn't even run after two laps, so I had to pull in. So I'm done for this one, but I'll be back next week. That's right. You got a weekend off. Regroup. We'll see you back at Moto. All right, bikes cutting out is the new fashion trend of motocross. Seems like every couple of laps we're talking to another rider that said his bike cut out. I don't know what yeah, the deal is. I mean, all of the electronics and everything, the ECU and uh, fuel injection parts and all that, everything is sealed. I don't know what the deal is on yeah. that, but uh, it certainly has been an issue for these 250s in particular uh, and across a couple of two or three different brands. So here it is. Baggett continues to lead Wilson, but it's been a lot of races this year where once Baggett's gotten the lead, no one has been able to even keep pace. This time, Wilson is doing it. Here's Watch. Nick Paluzzi on the left. Watch this. Yeah, Nick Paluzzi, 72 on the yellow bike. Watch, he gets over the top right here. Oh, sorry. Oh, he gets uh, a little wild there. Oh, and his left hand. He was planning on the bike sliding, and it caught. And he was riding with such light grip that when he did that, his weight went to the right, to the high side, and his left hand came off the bars. And then, of course, not so good from there. Wow, I hope he's all right. That looked like a, a pretty rough hit. Well, people are going to immediately say, why would you ride one of these bikes and not grip the bike as hard as you possibly can? Explain why you would not. Well, because it's, uh, we have what's arm pump, what's called arm pump here in motocross. And if you just have a death grip on those handlebars and you're not breathing, your forearms actually pump up with blood, then it gets hard for you to use your hands, your wrists don't bend, everything just kind of locks up. Then you can't use the throttle, the clutch, the front brake. Here is Han in fourth, and now Kyle Cunningham, who has really become Mr. Consistency, been a top five runner in most of the motos this year, is in the top five again, and going for fourth. So he has gotten around Sealy, Yamaha, Star Racing Team, has had someone up there almost every race we've run this year. Cunningham's had a couple of good runs. Gareth Swanepoel has, their teammate. Gannon Odette, a rookie, and Ryan Sipes is back. Next battle, Cole Sealy, and the number 20 of Brock Tickle. It's the big LaRocco's leap, but they cannot get over this third jump here on the 250s today. Yeah, and, it, and it's frustrating right there, too, to do the double single, and then over the, the third one, over, over the single, you kind of have to air it out, then you do that hard landing. So two battles to watch, Sealy versus Tickle. That is sixth and seventh, and in front of them, Hahn and Cunningham. And don't forget, hey, we do have a battle for the lead. Wilson is giving Blake Baggett all he wants here in this second moto. How's it going to break down between the two teammates? Who's going to take it today? Still got a fantastic race going on here. Second moto of the 250 class at Redbud. Blake Baggett is doing everything he can to get away from Dean Wilson. He has put in a hot lap here at the halfway mark, and he is edging away just a little bit from his teammate. Meanwhile, Aaron Bates has a special guest who, as fast as Blake Baggett is going, is used to going even faster than this. Aaron, who do you got? That's right, you guys. I'm here with J.R. Hildebrand, the IndyCar racer, number four of the National Golf Tour. J.R., you were so close to winning that Indy 500 this year, and you're out here still supporting all this. You can't even like it. What's it like being here at your first motocross match? Yeah, it's cool. We get to a lot of Supercross races, but it's my first like outdoor, so it's it's cool to see a little more kind of the grassroots. You really see the you know how physical it is for these guys and stuff. So uh, you know, I'm I'm living down in, you know kind of close by Indianapolis, and uh, it's a really good opportunity to come check it out. Any chance we're gonna see? Yeah, you're eating some roost out here. Any chance we'll see you hang up IndyCar and come race photo? I don't know about that, man. Like these guys have been at it for a long time. They like they're they're really trucking out there. So um, I go keep doing what I'm doing. Let these guys hang on to the dirt. Always a pleasure having you here. Thanks a lot.
as disappointing as that was, uh, not holding on and crashing on the last lap, still a great story. Uh, you know, he's new to the sport, basically, at that level and a new team, so expect that name to be around and uh, IndyCar Racing for a long time, and expect this name to be around as well. He's kind of our little J.R. Hildebrand. Second year as a pro, winning a whole bunch of races, and guess what, Jeff? He has dropped the hammer, as he likes to say, and he's pulling away. Yeah, and just before the break, Wilson had closed up, had turned some better lap times than Baggett. Last lap around, we're, I'll, we're halfway through this one, Baggett turned at 2.13.5. He went out and blew the fastest time away that anyone's even put down this moto, and Wilson was at a 2.15.4, so Baggett was two seconds a lap quicker. The problem that Wilson has is now Ra uh, uh, Ratra here, his teammate, who sets in third, was a half a second faster than him last lap also. So things starting to get real interesting here for Dean Wilson. Yeah, Wilson may have more company from Rattray than he is close to his teammate Baggett. And uh, at that halfway mark, Baggett has said that that's where he really starts to put in the fast laps, and that's exactly what he did here. Now, Rattray is also a guy who's always strong late in the race. Not that Wilson's known for fading, but you just don't like to have that number 28 bearing down on you in the second half of a motocross race. This guy's tough. Yeah, he definitely has the M.O. of uh, being um, a hard worker, a trainer, a guy that just keeps pounding out the laps. He's relentless, never gives up. All of those qualities that it takes to win on a day like today. And uh, Rattray had to come from behind a little bit first moto. Is doing a similar ride here in uh, moto two, but he got a much better start. Cal Cunningham in the number four spot on the DNA Shred 6 Star Racing Yamaha. All alone back there in fourth, but he had to work hard to get that position. He has gotten past a couple of riders, Sealy and Han, to get there. Brock Tickle trying to follow him through. So Cunningham is fourth, Han fifth, Tickle sixth, Sealy seventh. See his mechanic there putting on the board. 20 minutes to go, plus two laps, and to be smooth. So when you come through the pit board area, you know, usually you have it worked out with your mechanic about what's going to be on the board whether it's a lap time thing and you're challenging your own lap time. Let's say here for Will Hahn, uh, he's turning a 219. So, you know, maybe his target lap time of what he could do, you know, would be a 218. Okay, so he knows he's either plus or minus from that 218, or maybe it's words of encouragement and positive thoughts. Here is Tickle, who uh, has ridden well at times this year, but the standards are set very high considering his three teammates are running one, two, three. He is in sixth, trying to get top five, go after Han. Well, Next is uh, Sealy. No, Sealy's on the right. He's been passed by the rock star Suzuki man, Martin Davalos, kid out of Ecuador, putting the number th 23 bike up into seventh. So that will push Sealy on the Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda back to eighth. Davalos had a couple of good motos as of late, had some mechanical troubles in our last race at. Uh, Denver, but he's been a top five guy, or top ten guy, sorry, most of the races this year. Yeah, and I did not expect to see Sealy um, have a ride like this. I expected him to kind of push forward. Um, he definitely has the speed like that uh, this season, but who knows, maybe this heat here and the humidity, we uh, heard it was close to 105 degrees, <laughs> super humid leading into it, but also looking at uh, Malcolm Stewart here, 139, after a mechanical problem, DNF the first moto. Yeah, he said he'd be back here strong in moto two, and he is. And uh, Stewart is ninth. Nico Izzy is 10th. Yes, he is. And Izzy, originally from Michigan, uh, does a lot of riding and training all over the country in the warmer climate. But he's got a lot of friends and family out here, and they got to be happy to see him up in the top 10. Baggett continues to lead Wilson and Rattray. Got a race ready Kawasaki here. Blake Baggett on the number 57, leading, and he is getting kicked all over the place on this rough track, but he takes it all in stride, heads over to Larocco's leap, takes two of the three jumps, there's a the third jump there. 250's not able to get over that, but he's been able to conquer everything else. Had some pressure from his teammate, Dean Wilson, and then he just decided to turn it up. Yeah, and as far as, you know, Larocco's leap, it, it earned its name when Mike Larocco was riding a 125, which is the 250 class nowadays. Yeah. But way back in 1991, you could make that jump, that triple jump on a 125, but it wasn't nearly as long, it wasn't nearly as steep, and nearly as tall. But uh, it still was a, it was a leap back in the days. They've stretched it out to 130 feet. Wow. To jump, uh, it's like jumping over a five-story building. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. 
Yeah, these are some of the best riders in the world and some of the most well-tuned machines, but these 250s still cannot get over that big jump. Baggett. 8.7 seconds is the lead over Wilson. And he actually got a rare good start in this moto, but not the best start. Watch his progressive hole shot replay. Take us through this, Jeff. Watch on the right of your screen. That's Will Hahn, Geico Honda. And he's way out front. And way, as way he out comes, front. As he comes around turn two, there he was three bike links ahead of the next bike. Just, I mean, so determined, so dialed in off of that start. That was, that was just incredible. Wilbur's back to fifth now, but I want to ask you, what kind of confidence would it take to come off the couch? He had not raced in six months due to injuries to think, I'm going to try to get this started. I'm going to try to run the pace and, and, and try to do this either that and not or, just cruise. Either that or a sense of urgency, like, hey, uh, I'm not in the shape I need to be in. If I don't get the whole shot, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be buried way in the pack. But uh, Will Hahn's putting in a great ride. Uh, just unbelievable to be fifth in this moto. He was eighth in moto one. He hasn't raced all year. Well, the team needs him back. They have been beset with injuries, and uh, we'll give you an idea. They just dealt with another one today. Eli Tomac over that Larocco's lead earlier today. Watch this. Yeah, watch. He lands off of the leap here, and he's doing a 2-1. And it was really muddy earlier today in practice, and he kind of scrubbed the first two. Front wheel washed out on him a little bit, as, as you've seen, and he hit the mat pretty hard. And Aaron has Eli Tomac down to the pits, Aaron. Eli just watched that on the screen, but Eli, it almost looks to the viewers at home that you were just practicing some freestyle and put a cross out there. All seriousness, you did go away in the ambulance and you got checked out. What is the diagnosis and um, how are you feeling? Um, I'm really lucky that nothing's bro broken, just kind of beaten and battered. Um, you know, I'll definitely be back next or at Mill Bell. So um, really it's just go back um, home and recover and get ready for the next round. Is this the point of the season where this break, this one week break comes at the perfect time? Yeah, it'll be nice to have a weekend off because I definitely, I'll be feeling that crash. But um, I'm just really lucky that nothing seriously went wrong. Well, Tomac was the next closest rider in points to this Kawasaki trio is dominating this series. Scratch him from title contention. Blake Baggett going to try to take it home. From Phoenix, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. I mean, on Fox. You an AL guy or an AL? AL Which guy. Side? AL. AL guy. American yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll see. They had a nice streak going for a little while. Here is the number 20 of Brock Tickle. He had some momentum, a little streak going. He had won the Supercross title on the West Coast before the outdoor tour here began. But uh, he's been good, but not quite as good as his teammates in this outdoor series. Had uh, one podium finish in a moto, had a third. And right now he's in fifth. That would be good ordinarily. But his teammates, Baggett, Wilson, and Rattray are doing it again. They are one, two, three. And While we were away, he did get around Will Hahn, though, to move up to fifth. Yeah, and, and the math here for Tickle, after that seventh, the first moto, sets fifth right now. It, it's looking likely that he will uh, add another top five overall to the two that he already has. And it's a pretty solid ride, but as you can see, most of this season, Tickle has just not got the starts that he's needed to run up front. A little bit further back here is a battle. Got Gareth Swanepoel in the 387 on the left, the Yamaha and the 46 of Amart, Alex Martin, who will literally be the home track specialist the next time we race at Millville, Minnesota, because his parents own that track. Here at Redbud, he's just trying to hold off Swanepoel, and they are in a battle for 12th and 13th. Swanepoel has had a couple of good races this year. Uh, yeah, got to be backwards in fourth places. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that 17th, the first moto, not getting it done. He had to ride from pretty far back. And uh, Martin, I believe, was out with some problems in that first one. So it's a good bounce back for both of these riders here. And they are putting on a great race. And that's what's exciting about this 250 class, Jeff. You can look all over the racetrack. These two are battling for 12th. You think they're battling for the lead, the way they're hammering each other. Yeah, yeah, but look at Martin here. He's had uh, such good rides this season and you can tell that just you know the uh, chemistry between him and his bike everything's just kind of working better than what it has so far and he's uh, really showing his true potential now what's great about racing air at redbud is we mix in the excitement of motocross and the fun of independence day weekend so we decided to ask some of our 250 riders about their best memories of july 4th most memorable fourth of july moment would have to be a few years ago I was at uh, Tedder's 4th of July party and we're all on the beach and then uh, 
all of a sudden some little plane uh, landed right there in the water, you know, like maybe 50 feet offshore, one of the ones that tows those signs over the beach. And uh, it didn't hit anybody, but it was pretty sweet to see a little plane sitting in the water with like hundreds of people around it. And uh, that would probably have to be my best 4th of July moment. Um, I would have to say my most memorable 4th of July moment, you know, I don't really do much, but uh, usually you go down to like Huntington Beach or something and they have like a pretty sick fireworks show that night, so it's usually the coolest thing to do. Yeah, my most memorable 4th of July moment would be uh, in 09, we were all racing, the whole team, it was last lap, and uh, I was doing Morocco's Leap every lap, and uh, Medi was only doubling it, and I ended up passing him on the last lap and getting on the podium, so that's probably my most memorable moment at, uh, here at Redwood on the 4th of July. My most memorable 4th of July moment, Red Bull 2008, whole shot the first moto, led about half of it, ended up getting third. It was my first outdoor podium. It was, it was a good 4th of July. And that's the mix that we're talking about. <laughs> For most people, you know, 4th of July, it's all about hot dogs, apple pie, and uh, fireworks, things like that. But uh, here we mix in the motocross yeah. element. Firecracker blowing up in your hand, the fuse goes off, all that fun <laughs> stuff. I mean, right here is the firecracker. Yeah. This yeah. guy's on fire. He is dominating it halfway through the motor. Looked like Wilson had something for him. Yep. Now with three to go, out front, 9.6 second lead. About a second faster than Wilson, who is in second. And surprisingly, Rattray has backed off the pace and he closed up on the back of Wilson. But once again, Mitch Payton and uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki and the whole crew and Bones and all the mechanics and technicians and everybody there is showing all the all all the hard work that this team does consistently year after year. This is the team that is the benchmark of the 250 class. And if it wasn't for Cunningham running fourth right now, which tickles right on him, yeah. But before this thing's over, it could change. But man, and they've bounced back a bit uh, last year outdoors. Trey Kennard on the Geico Honda was able to win this championship. And then Justin Barsha won the East Coast Supercross Championship. And Eli Tomek had a shot at the West Coast Championship. And it looked like the Geico team was about to turn the tide of momentum and championships in their direction. But it has changed quickly here in this Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. There is absolutely no doubt which team is the dominant force right now. And you're right, they could be one, two, three, four before this one is over. Yeah, and, and since Mitch started his race team, I believe it was 91, mm -hmm. uh, he's enjoyed a tremendous amount of success. But there was a year or two here and there where he didn't. And it was really surprising, and he was able to get things together and get you know back on the map and back up there. But that's why you just never know. And every victory, every moto victory, Every overall, every championship, even if you think that you're going to have a Ricky Carmichael type career and have 150 wins and yada, yada, yada. That's one thing that I appreciated about Ricky, especially in the latter part of his career, even though he had won so much, you could tell he was just savoring each and every one of them because he knew that, that it was really special. And uh, this is not the first time that this team has had teammates battling for race wins and maybe a championship. And you'd think things get tense under there, but I was talking to some people this morning and they made a great point. There he is, Mitch Payton to the left, perfect. He is the star of that team. The team owner, the guy that runs this operation, there's no doubt who number one is there. You're still on Mitch Payton's team. No one is bigger than that pro circuit team. So no matter what these guys do, we've seen some great battles team teammates on this squad in the past. You go back a few years ago, Ben Townley, Ryan Villapoto. Well, they battled every moto and they were best friends all summer long. Mitch doesn't let anyone on his team uh, get any unfair advantage over anyone else. And Mitch has twin boys, right? So 16 years from now, is he uh -oh. have, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's got plenty of room on the team. He's got <laughs> four bikes every year, so maybe. Here is Blake Baggett. That's Mitch's boy right now. And he's headed toward the white flag. And there was a challenge from Wilson, but not happening. Wilson about nine seconds back. So we're calling him El Chupacabra. Normally because he starts in the back and then just starts to strike. And he strikes so quickly these guys don't even see him. I mean, once he sets you up for a pass, it's over. This time around, Wilson did get a look at the Chupacabra for about 15 minutes. And then he disappeared. Once again, Blake Baggett has speed that no one can match. And we literally saw him turn it up in the second half of this race. Yeah, and the one thing that is separating these riders, uh, you know, each one of these guys is putting out a tremendous effort. They all want to win, they have desire, determination, they all work hard. It's flow, and 
Blake Baggett has just had more flow than everyone else. He's just, you know, he's he's rolling through the turns at just a click faster. And there's so many turns on the track. You add that all up, it ends up being a second a lap or a couple seconds a lap. Okay, and so he just seems to have a little bit more speed uh, in that situation. And I'm telling you, for Dean Wilson, he's your points leader, but frustrated because he's putting out a tremendous effort. I've spoke to Dean, and I know how much he wants to win. Uh, consistency is good at this point, but uh, unless you can win these motos, it's going to be tough to win the championship here at the end of the summer. He's going to gain six points on Wilson with this. It's 20 points behind him coming in, so it'll only be a 14-point differential, and Rattray will be right there in between them. You keep riding like this second half of the year, you can make up a whole bunch of points. But you got to wonder, with the speed that he runs, Jeff, Wilson and Ratchet have the back of their mind. Well, maybe he'll just crash it away. We've seen him have a couple of bad motos this year. Or has he figured this thing out? He doesn't look like to me that he's riding anywhere near, uh, uh, you know, the edge, like okay. past the point. Like he's doing anything erratic where it's like, oh, my God, he's just crazy out there on the bike. He's this crazy speed. He looks so in control. And, uh, I mean, he's very close with, with Ryan Villapoto. He grew up. You know, uh, Brian Poto stayed with him and his family. A lot of, you know, uh, similarities there. And uh, that would be bad news for everybody else because Poto was three-time champion, three in a row. Same team, same bike, and so far, same result. Yeah, same result. And you know what that is. Another win for Blake Baggett. Second weekend in a row, he goes 1-1. Sweeps both motos. Another strong charge by Dean Wilson. He will finish second again. Maintains the points lead, that's good, but he wants a victory. Blake Baggett has another win in the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship. This Rockstar Energy Drink, Red Bud National is his. That's his mom there on the left. Kawasaki PR girl Ashley on the right, just walked by him. We'll show you exactly how he got this win with our Lucas Oil race recap. Started out terribly for Barsha. In fact, it didn't start at all. Couldn't get the bike started after the sight lap. Yeah, he made the sighting lap and then it started cutting out. Another uh, uh, bad moment here was for Nick Paluzzi. Oh. He goes down hard just before LaRocco's leap. Good moments, meanwhile, for some others. We mentioned that uh, Baggett was up front. He had some pressure from his teammate, Dean Wilson, for the first half of this 30-minute and two-lap moto. But at the second half, Baggett turned up the speed, put in a two-minute, 13-second lap time that no one could match, pulled away, and got the victory. And now he is down on the podium with Aaron Bates. Aaron? Back-to-back -back wins for Blake Baggett. Blake, you, you wrecked your superstition that you had going. You managed to pull it together this weekend. What does that do for you mentally moving forward? Yeah, no, the, uh, every other's over now. Now let's try to make it every one from here on out. Um, it's a lot to ask, but I think that uh, if I be smart and ride smooth, I can do it. But i got to give it up to my team, Monster Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Thor, Parts and Limited, Vans, Alpine Star, Volcom, Vans, Scott, Dunlop. Traxxas RC cars, um, SoCal Super Trucks for hooking up my truck, my mom, my dad, my trainer, Alder Bacon, and Keeley. Thanks. Another win for Blake Baggett. And we'll show you the races that he's going to try to win next with our Toyota upcoming schedule. Take a weekend off. We'll be back at Spring Creek in Millville, Minnesota. We'll have our 250 class coverage 6 p.m. on speed. Then Washougal, Washington, we're going to have uh, live coverage on speed there on July 23rd. A couple more weekends off, and then we're back in New Berlin, New York, the legendary Unadilla Valley Sports Center, 9 p.m. Your coverage on speed and Southwood, Massachusetts, the sand track, August 27th, 11 p.m. Eastern, your coverage on speed. So Saturday motocross rolls on, and that's your Toyota moving forward schedule. We'll be back with more from Redbud after this. We'll talk to some more riders up on the podium, and we'll ask them if they can figure out some way to stop El Chupacabra, who's got another win. Welcome back. Fans have gathered around the podium area for the victory celebration at this Rockstar Energy Drink Red Bud National, part of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Here are your results from our second 250 moto, which we just finished. One, two, three for the Kawasaki's Baggett Wilson Rattray. Kyle Cunningham prevented it from being a one, two, three, four Kawasaki sweep by holding off Brock Tickle down the stretch. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates, who has our runner up. Aaron? Dean Wilson just said, I have been in this situation too many times, too many second overalls. So the question to you, Dean, is what else is it going to take to come out of here on that number one spot? Oh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've had a lot of seconds, and uh, I 
feel like I've been riding well, you know, Blake's just, he's just got a little bit more than I do, and it's something that I'm going to have to work towards. You know, I'm staying consistent, which is good, you know, for a championship, but at the same time, I need the speed to get some wins, and uh, I've had more wins, but no overall wins, but like I said, Blake rode awesome. Couldn't do it without the whole Monster Energy Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Ford, Dunlop, Parts Unlimited, Scott, uh, Toyo Escondido, Volcom Vance, Mechanic Paul, Sam, my mom and dad, thank you. Here's the overall results combining the first race and the second. The kids up front make the math easy. Two first, two seconds, that's first and second. Rattray rallies back to take third overall. Another consistent day for Cunningham, holding off Tickle in the overall as well. Let's go back down to Aaron. Aaron? Rougher, the tougher the track is, the more you seem to excel, and that was the case here again today, Tyler. How was it? Yeah, it was pretty tough, you know. I made a hold of myself in that first race, going down in the second turn, and uh, had to come from last to fifth, but uh, just wanted to thank the guys from Monster Energy Pro, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Potsdam and Thor, Vance, Volcom, my wife, my mom, my dad, Wayne, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, was definitely tough for me, you know. I struggled a bit out there, and uh, come back to Florida this week, and next week I'll be back in California, do some testing, and be ready for mobile. Got a lot of talk about here in this 250 class. Totally different styles between Wilson, Baggett, and Rattray, and they all seem to meet in the middle. As far as the points go, Jeff, it is close. It definitely is. You can see Cunningham, 95 back. Of course, uh, Barsha and uh, Tomac really took a hit today uh, by having the bad motos that they did, but Cunningham right there hanging on. But if you're Wilson and Rattray, you were hoping that Baggett would not be able to recreate that speed every week. He had been in every other race winner. Now he's won two straight. They get a weekend off to try to figure it out and match his speed the next time we go racing in Minnesota. Hope you can join us there. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching our coverage of the 250 class from Redbud. And congrats to our winner, Blake Baggett.